Hello, I'm Emily Barker. Giving our kids a great public education includes learning support, effective school administration, policy development and enrichment programs. But the O'Farrell government is cutting school support jobs and making it harder to deliver the support our kids need. To discuss this, I'm joined by Sue Walsh, the president of the PSA. So the federal government has announced $1.7 billion in cuts to education. How will the cuts affect the Department of Education and SAS staff? There will be a terrible impact on um, department staff. Um, $1.7 million means what, uh, 1,800 jobs will be cut. There's 800 um, jobs going from TAFE, 600 going from corporate and 400 from school staff, um, school um, admin and support staff in schools. Um, on top of that, the government has announced many new initiatives mm -hmm. um, that will also impact on, on jobs as in, in the future. Uh, we've got uh, people are dealing with changes under empowering local schools, uh, national partnerships, local schools, local decisions, every student, every school, uh, LMBR, RAM, you name it. So those people are coping with those changes already. We've consistently asked um, the department about the impact those initiatives will have on jobs and they haven't been able to tell us a, a figure. However, when they announced the $1.7 billion cut, they were able to give those figures of 400 to start in schools. Now, um, there's a new program going into schools, it's a software mm -hmm. package called LMBR, and uh, that will change uh, how work is done in schools. Um, there's a trial going on 229 schools, and we were told after that trial, um, the department would talk to the PSA about those changes and the impact of those changes. However, the tri trial's only just started, and they've already announced 400 jobs to go. So we're very, very concerned that LNBR in particular will lead to further losses of um, SAS staff positions in schools. What about the workload? Will the workload obviously decrease or is, is, do other teachers, are they expected to pick up the slack there? Um, the workload, I mean, 1,800 jobs will go, but the workload won't go. So the people that are left behind are the ones who have to, will have to pick up that. So clearly, it's going to be a really bad impact uh, at the school level particularly. And we, the SAS staff do an you know, incredible job supporting teachers in their role. Mm. Um, so clearly, the teachers, the frontline workers, Will, actually, will have to do more of that um, support that, uh, work themselves. What about uh, other changes to working conditions has the government made? The government's also announced big changes to the conditions of employment um, and want to actually um, look at the award and change the award. Um, that will mean that 7.5% you know, um, um, load-ins will go. Um, there'll be changes to sorts, different sorts of leave. Um, already we've got a wages policy capped at 2.5%. Uh, that's actually, uh, in real terms, a, a um, salary decrease. Yeah. Um, we at the PSA are fighting very hard on that front. We've been to the High Court to challenge uh, that particular policy and the legality of it. Um, that was heard in September uh, the 5th, and we now await a decision from that court. Um, but, you know, clearly, those conditions of employment that have been fought for over many, many years are now under attack from this government. The government has continually attacked public sector workers since they've been in. In 18 months, they've just done so much damage that we're concerned that, you know, trying to rebuild mm. um, that, you know, the public sector uh, will take a long time. So we've got to stop, stop the, the rot now. And hence, what's happening on the 8th of October? On the 8th of October, the uh, executive of the PSA has authorised a stop work meeting mm -hmm. uh, before our stoppage. Uh, there will be a main meeting at the Sydney Town Hall and uh, uh, that uh, meeting will be broadcast to about 30 or 40 other venues across the state. Um, the union officials will talk to the members, give them a clear outline of what, what the gov government's agenda uh, has been and will be in the future and we'll be asking uh, members to support the PSA in a, you know, in a campaign to continue the fight against that, that attack. Why is it important for PSA members and schools to get involved? Well, I think um, the reason that schools should get in, the school staff should get involved is because they are the ones that are being targeted. Mm. And clearly, uh, as I said earlier, this is only the start and everyone that works in a school is gonna be affected 
by these cuts. The department has said their, their, their um, jobs will change because of these initiatives um, and we believe not only will they change but jobs will actually um, be deleted from, from the um, service. And with principals being uh, able now to have more power in terms of staffing mix, we know that when, for instance, if a um, SAS staff person resigns or retires, the principal can either fill that position um, by a casual or a part-time person or not even fill it at all. So that, again, comes back to the workload issue mm. because once that, that job is deleted, the, the work is still there. So someone's got to have someone to, do has to do it. So clearly, um, people in schools should get behind the PSA in this campaign um, because I think, as I say, they're going to be targeted even further. Well, thanks, Sue, for coming in. And of course, for more information, visit supporteducation.com.au.